Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the 18th episode in my series on the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction. And I don't think there's any surprise that I am including Starship Troopers on this list. It is obviously a controversial novel that even says so right there on the cover. <laughs> it was published in 1959. This is the 1987 edition. So by the time this edition was published, it had a lot of time to achieve its notoriety. I originally read it in a different edition. It was a green uh, cover that had the troopers descending uh, by their parachutes, which were actually like circles or something. And I'm not really sure what happened with that edition. I might have gotten rid of it in my great book purge a few years back. The reason I'm including this, I mean, aside from the fact that it is one of the seminal works in science fiction, it ticks a lot of the boxes that I think need to be ticked in order to be included on this list. For one thing, it essentially if not launched, then at least solidified the military science fiction subgenre and is considered to be the apex book in that subgenre, I think. It's an example of political science fiction. There are lots of discussions about political ideas and ideologies in this book. It's one of the reasons why it's so controversial. Obviously, it's considered a classic in science fiction. I don't think you could have a list of books like this and not include it, even if you don't like it, even if you disagree vehemently with everything that it seems to stand for. You still have to acknowledge the fact that it is one of the most influential books in all of science fiction. It influenced other writers to write books that were either um, in some way a response to this, or at least were heavily influenced by it, most famously probably The Forever War by Joe Haldeman, which even if it wasn't necessarily a direct rebuttal in a certain way of this book, it still was influenced by it, and Joe has admitted as much. It also greatly influenced the book Armor, by John Stakely, in which Stakely decided he wanted to explore some of the concepts of using that powered armor suit that this book essentially, if not was the origin of, definitely popularized. He wanted to explore how that was used uh, further in more sort of combat situations and the effects that it would have on the user. It was also greatly influential to Harry Harrison in writing Build a Galactic Hero, which is essentially a brilliant parody of Starship Troopers. It was adapted into the 1997 movie Starship Troopers, which actually was probably more of a, even though it took the story from this book, it was probably more of a direct commentary on the politics of this book even, I would say, a farce uh, of this book. I wouldn't call it a straight-up parody, even though it fits the definition of a parody. I would actually say it's more a farce. It's basically taking the ideas in this book and pushing them to their limits. So it's really more about a commentary of the ideas that this book presents than on the story that this book actually contains within it. You could say that this book has greatly influenced basically all of military science fiction since it was published, which is a lot of books. It has prompted a lot of discussion, a lot of essays written about it, a lot of back and forth, a lot of people who like to consider this book as an extension of Heinlein's actual political views, whereas other people, including Heinlein himself, at least in some cases, in some letters or in other essays that he's written, Heinlein essentially stated, look, this is just me presenting ideas. A lot of this comes from things that I think might be worth exploring further. I don't know that I would consider this the embodiment of fascist ideology so much as maybe an exploration of the idea of limiting the franchise of the electorate 
to people who serve one way or another, whether it's in the military or in other aspects of the government. In some ways, not a whole lot different from, say, ancient Greece, ancient Athens, where you had the polis, which was basically made up of landed men who did vote and who were expected to serve, whether it was militarily or within the government of Athens, whether they wanted to or not. So I think it's sort of somewhere in there. Are there fascist overtones? Definitely. You're going to have points of view in a book that I think need to be addressed by other characters in the book, by you as the writer, and also by the people who read it. And so I think it's fair that Heinlein, you know, gets the scrutiny that people are giving him and this book because he did write this book after all. So I think it's, it's healthy to discuss these kinds of things. When I was a kid, I read this book six times. The only books that I read as much as this book were the Lord of the Rings. But back then, basically from middle school up through high school, I read this over and over again. I couldn't get enough of it. I also read other uh, Heinlein juveniles multiple times as well. And so, you know, this book definitely appeals to the young reader, the young male reader, definitely, at least it appealed to me at that age. It was written as one of his juveniles. The publisher didn't think it was a juvenile. Heinlein did. It's interesting because Pod Cain of Mars is a book that he wrote not thinking of as a juvenile yet, which is considered by many to be a juvenile. At some point, I intend to do a deeper dive into the Heinlein juveniles, and I will include this book and also Pod Cain of Mars. And then again, I will do another video digging deeper into the ideas and ideologies expressed in this book, as well as some of the discussions and some of the comments and some of the reviews and some of the reactions that this book got, and try to suss out a little bit more about what this meant, both in terms of the book itself and also what it meant to science fiction literature and fandom. So there you have it, number 18 on my bookshelf my imaginary bookshelf containing the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction, Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. Thank you very much.